In learning objective three, we're going to look at average returns. Uh, how have these financial instruments averaged, what have they averaged over the last 85 to 90 years? Stocks, small company stocks, large company stocks, government bonds, corporate bonds, um, T-bills, and also what has inflation done over the last 85 to 90 years? Uh, we know that to calculate an average, we simply take the 85 years of returns, add them up, and divide by 85. So it's pretty simple. We have hundreds and hundreds of numbers across the five indicators studied by Ibbotson and Sinkfeld, so we can do all kinds of statistical analysis in terms of uh, means, modes, means, averages, standard deviations, variances. In Ibbotson and Sinkfeld's study, we see that large company stocks on average, if you slice through all those uh, data points we looked at on a prior slide, we see that the average for large company stocks is about 12.1%. These are your IBMs, GMs, companies like that, and they measure these each and every year, and they've averaged. They will get you 12%. Uh, if history repeats itself uh, based on what it's done over the last 85 to 90 years, small company stocks will get you almost 17% on average. However, are you willing to take that volatility where some years you might see these stocks go up 30 or 40 or 50 percent. Next year, they might go down 30 or 40 or 50 percent. So these are wildly volatile. Uh, tip, it proves the point high risk, high return. Uh, bonds basically get you 6 percent. Whether you invest in uh, corporate bonds or government bonds, we see that uh, long-term corporates have uh, averaged 6.3 percent over the last 85 to 90 years. And uh, long-term government bonds, similarly, about 6 percent, 5.9 percent has been their average return. Uh, T-bills have grown slowly and steadily at about 35 to 4% per year, and inflation over the last um, 85 to 90 years has averaged about 3%. From these numbers, we can also calculate the risk premium. Risk premium is excess return required from an investment in a risky asset over that required from a risk-free investment. So risk-free investment being the treasury bill rate, we simply subtract the T-bill rate from these averages to get the risk premium. Um, Risk-free rate being the T-bill rate, so we'll subtract the 3.7% from all of the above average returns to come up with the risk premium. Once again, we can see the averages on these instruments, and now we can calculate also the risk premium. If we take the average return minus the T-bill rate, we can calculate the risk premium, the um, reward for bearing risk above and beyond the T-bill rate. So to calculate risk premium, we take the large company stock return of 12.1%, uh, subtract the T-bill rate of 3.5%, and we see a risk premium of 8.6%. Note that the small company stock risk premium is very, very high. That in indicates a high level of risk. Uh, I take the 16.9%, subtract the 3.5% of T-bill rate, and I get a risk premium of 13.4%, and so on down the line. Corporate bonds... Um, 2.8 and long-term government bonds 2.4 percent. That's simply by taking their average total return minus the T-bill rate. And that shows you the degree of risk you're taking on by buying one of these instruments.